The Full Melt Show is intended for a mature audience. It contains adult themes, adult content, and sometimes adult language. Listener discretion is advised. It's the Full Melt Show. Let's try that again. And finally, new rule for this Valentine's Day. People who love marijuana have to have to do me this favor. Stop treating it like you could never lose it. You know, not a week goes by without someone asking me to get into the pot business with them. Don't get left behind, they tell me. We can make a fortune selling marijuana or Billy Buds or... Silly Billy's wacky tobacco. Everybody seems 100% certain that a completely weed legal America on the model of gay marriage is right around the corner. Yes, the pot lovers say it's only legal in four states now, but Bill, the rest are going to fall like dominoes. I hear it all the time. They're going to fall like dominoes. Dominoes. Hey, let's order from Domino's. Okay. <laughs> You hippies need to get your head out of your grass. <laughs> Progress doesn't just automatically snowball. Think of other rights we never thought would be rolled back. Look what's happened with abortion. Since 1991, 81% of abortion clinics have closed. In Mississippi, it's easier to get good Thai food. <laughs> In Mississippi. In Texas, you have to drive 500 miles and sit through an informational video where Ted Cruz calls you a whore. <laughs> so too with pot. In 2013, L.A. had nearly 700 dispensaries. But since then, over 500 have been shut down. And dispensaries still can't get banking services because they're too skeevy. The banks, not the dispensaries. <laughs> And we still do not have a major politician who will simply say, legalize it nationally, period. Pre <laughs> President Obama has tried to move the needle a little. He says pot is not very different from cigarettes and no more dangerous than alcohol, but it's a bad habit. And this is what passes as supportive? even though none of those statements are really true. It's not a bad habit, it's a fantastic habit. <laughs> Unless, like anything, you overdo it. It's way different than cigarettes, mainly not linked to lung cancer. And no more dangerous than alcohol? Try way, way, way less dangerous. Somehow this is the year when everything from socialism to mass deportation is on the table. And voters love the authentic guys who speak their minds. But when it comes time for Congress to consider common sense pot legislation, it's like smoking a joint with Woody Harrelson. They just won't pass it. <laughs> And I'll tell you why, because pot is not like gay marriage. With gay marriage, no one stood to lose money if the law changed. But the war on drugs keeps billions flowing to DEA agents and police and prisons. And legal weed would mean Americans had an alternative to altering their mood by downing OxyContin and Budweiser. Or as Rush Limbaugh calls it, lunch. <laughs> I was reading recently about a guy named Raymond Schwab from Kansas. He's a Gulf War veteran who wanted to move to Colorado to treat his chronic pain and PTSD because while the VA gave him lots of prescription drugs, for him, pot is the only thing that actually works. So Raymond thought moving to Colorado where pot is legal and he could even grow it was a great idea. Kansas? Not so much. They got wind of the move and took away his children. Now, I'm not a big fan of children. <laughs> but I believe if you like yours, you should get to keep them. <clears throat> Maybe that's my New York values talking. 
But this is what happens when pot is legal in some states, sort of legal in others, and completely illegal in places like Kansas, where frankly they could use some. <laughs> we can't leave this up to the states because states' rights is always code for taking away rights. And since liberals have never accepted states' rights as an excuse to deny black people education or voting or outlaw gay marriage or abortion, why do they accept it with this? When only some people have it and some don't, that's not equality, that's Wi-Fi. <laughs> I can't think of another example of a drug that's legal in one state, but not in another. It's not a tenable situation. Because when I leave Colorado, Oregon, Washington, or Alaska, my back pain doesn't go away, or whatever it is I have. <laughs> I'm kidding, I use medical marijuana because my third eye has glaucoma. <laughs> And you know, it's, it's acting up right now. Maybe, uh, maybe I should, um... Maybe I should treat it. It's his private property and I do have a card, so... In conclusion... Please remember, <laughs> please remember that legalizing pot is a long way from a done deal. I know you're tired, I am too, of making the same old obvious pot arguments, like how pot is less dangerous than other legal adult activities. But somehow you can drink alcohol, you can smoke cigarettes, you can do that thing where you cut off your oxygen with a belt and masturbate. <laughs> Which is not only dangerous, but take it from me, it'll get you kicked out of Macy's menswear like that. Are you high? I what are you high. talking about? This is the full melt show. Give me a break. The full melt show. A marijuana discussion about news, news culture, culture, politics, and lifestyle. Fullmelt.com. Toll free. 844-420-TALK. 844-420-TALK. Monday, Monday, Monday. We call it Marijuana Monday. Welcome to the Full Melt Show. I'm Steve Green. A jam-packed program for you again today. Marijuana is something that's just uh, not going to disappear from the American lexicon anytime soon. I don't know, it's, it's uh it's prevalent in almost all of popular culture from a very early time in our nation's history. It's nearly as traditional as churches in this country. Uh, so I, 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 I have to thank HBO for letting me use that piece from Bill Maher. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, terrible. Um. Bill, Bill often talks about cannabis and often, you know, has the same point of view that we do here on this program, which is get over it already, pretty much. Um, and, 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 you know, uncovering the lies behind the policy. Because it's, it's really been force-fed to Americans wrapped in a wrapper that is confusing about its contents. And when Bill has a, a genius moment like that, because um, I can think of no other person in the country right now, uh, see, see aside from maybe Joe Rogan, he, he'll make some comments like this from time to time and, and really hit the nail on the head about the subject. Uh, Bill Maher is another one of those guys. And I, I, what I like about Bill Maher is that he's, He's just a comedian, right? Um, but he adds some sugar to the medicine. Because this is all about educating people, right? The government's been spending a lot of your tax dollars educating you about 
a fictitious point of view. I mean, the government doesn't actually have the point of view that cannabis is dangerous. They don't. They know better. The government isn't stupid. They've spent a lot of year and my money figuring a lot of stuff out, and cannabis is right up there with them. It's, it's so marred, it's so buried in our code in this country, that some of the current politicians exist in the space that was manufactured by previous politicians, and they don't even, they're not even aware of it, of being members of the same institutions. We are truly indeed, for as educated as we are here in this country, as innovative as we are, we are truly indeed ignorant. We are very low information when it comes to civic duty. And, and this is also programmed in. Don't, don't be misinformed about the idea that America's disenfranchisement, if that's a word, I just invented that word. They feel disenfranchised with their government. This was, this was done intentionally. See, it's a lot easier to let a very smaller, much smaller group of people have control over what happens in this country if indeed they get the larger group of people to not care about it because they feel like they're, they're, they're not having an effect or it's, you know, I've got too much to worry about in my own life to, fit, to worry about what this means and how it works and there's no reliability in my vote. I mean, this is the disenfranchisement that we have going on. Um, make no mistake about that being intentional. Uh, people who manage to manipulate power away from others, those that are good at that are good at it for a reason. I mean, they really hone in on that subject. And uh, it's nice to see when uh, people like comedian Bill Maher uh, take an opportunity to, I think, put things in perfect context and also do it in a way that people can remember that people can relate to that isn't boring them to tears in fact it's drawing you in come for the comedy stay for the message right that's what i think about it on today's program you know connecticut is so broke that pot's looking like an awfully good solution also marijuana's medical if it is why has a big pharma mass produced it also pot exercises the brain really We'll talk about those things and more, but first, Ryan Richmond, when we come back from the break. He's the president of No Smell LLC. It's a Michigan-based manufacturer of No Smell Bags, a storage solution made with patented material that ensures no one can tell what's inside. Our interview with him is next here on the program. You're getting the full melt. When you need legal help, you don't want to guess at who's standing next to you in court. And when it comes to a medical marijuana defense... It's even smarter to partner with a lawyer before you need one. Based in Royal Oak, David Rudoy has a proven history of not being afraid to take your case all the way to the Supreme Court and win. Find the law offices of Rudoy Law at RudoyLaw.com. RudoyLaw.com is a quick reference on your rights concerning Michigan medical marijuana and up-to-date news. That's R-U-D-O-I Law.com. Call 248-935-9074 now and talk about your legal needs because at RudoyLaw.com, we don't just stand up for you, we stand up with you. Root Metrics, in the nation's largest independent study, tested wireless performance across the country. Verizon won big with 153 state wins. AT&T got 38, Sprint got 2, and T-Mobile got 0. Verizon also won first in the U.S. for data, call, speed, and reliability. AT&T got text. Stuck on an average network? Join Verizon, and we'll cover your cost to switch. It's Steve Green for the Sweet Leaf in Flint, because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan, is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person, 400 South Door Highway, or call 810-259-2571. The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810-259-2571. 571. What's up with these things, Victor? We decided to give ourselves stickers for each feature we release. We read about 10,000 suggestions a week to create features that, as traders, we'd want to use. 10,000 suggestions? Who reads all of those? He does. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, you got this. 
Introducing Sacred Elements, a place for natural and alternative healing for the mind, body, and soul. Sacred Elements. It's one place, all solutions. Registered, licensed, certified, ordained. Sacred Elements. Massage, hypnosis, Reiki. Sacred Elements. Raindrop, aroma and color therapy. Body detox, ministry, life coaching, weight and nutrition counseling. Sacred Elements. Next to the Sweet Leaf, 400 South Dort Highway, Flint. 11 to 7 daily, closed Sunday. Call 810-259-2570. It's the full melt. Radio show. Radio show. So you know, uh, this program comes to you every every day of the week, most weeks of the year, and it's brought to you by some of our awesome advertisers here on the program. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do it for you. I thought I'd take the time here tonight to uh, kind of talk about one of our advertisers in particular. It's the uh, No Smell Bag people. Um, here's a little example of uh, the No Smell Bags. We, we did this, uh, we filmed this footage. This is actually video footage. I'm going to play the audio from it uh, out at the Hash Bash. We're out here at the world famous High Times Cannabis Cup where we're demonstrating the new Canalog smell proof technology. It's a smell proof bag. I, I thought it was hash it's a cannabis cup. Patented technology. If you smell the bag, you can't smell anything, right? Right. You cannot smell anything. So give it a pop it open there and see what you got. It's got a double seal on there. Wow. That's amazing. Are you screwed it up, Ryan? What's wrong with you? <laughs> you can't be texting me during the show because I'm playing audio from that device. <laughs> Welcome to the program, Ryan Richmond. Are you there? Oh, he's not. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. Damn it. All right. Let's just see what's going on here. It, 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 this has gone to, to, terribly awry already. <sighs> let's just uh, let's just see. I had him on the hold there, and I was playing the piece. And then he's got to text me while I'm playing the piece. <laughs> Is there a hammer somewhere? Do I have a hammer? Let me see if we can get him online here. Uh, I don't know where he went or why he went wherever he went. I can't. Can I dial out on this line? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's just find out. I got to find the number here. Oh, damn it. Hang on. Here we go. I don't get it. La, la, la. Will it do this one? No, it's, see, it's not going to let me dial out there. Let's just, oh, here he is. Are you there, Ryan? Hello? Oh, hi, Steve. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> Look, um, I was playing the, the Canalock piece uh, on the phone when you texted me, and it shut it off. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I'm probably less savvy than you, then, it sounds like. Yeah. That's, that's, well, you, you had no idea probably that I was playing it from the phone. I, I use uh, almost every uh, device we have here to make the show come off. <laughs> Well, I apologize. I'm here now. Yeah, no. Uh, look, I wanted to talk to you about uh, the no smell bags because I think that um, this is one of those things that people don't really know a lot about, and and I, I you're the perfect guy to go to to talk about it. Um, you make these no smell bags. Can you tell us about the no smell bags, what they are, and how they work? Yeah, sure. They're um, you know exactly. It's a storage solution. Um, you know, a lot of applications, but uh, specifically why we're calling is um, it's a patented charcoal technology which will actually destroy odor. So um, just a small handbag uh, for medical patients and whatnot to uh, put, put their herbs in. And the, um, the fabric is made out of a woven charcoal, so it'll actually eat the smell out of it. So you can you know, travel safely without fear of detection. So it's it's uh, really a remedy to keep keep people from knowing your business, right? Yeah. I so mean, nobody it, knows is the tagline. Yeah. If if uh, if you've got um, if you got anything that really is is pungent, is is uh, odiferous, uh, tends to be something you want to at least mitigate. Um, in this case, seems to eliminate 
its detectable presence. It, it, it does. Um, the company is actually we 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 acquired a medical company that was using this uh, patented uh, fabric in medical applications. So, colostomy bags, um, you know, odors. Uh, you know, there. I think there was a viral video of a underwear company that was made out of this, so it couldn't smell your farts. Um, but it's really <laughs> it's really an amazing product. So. You know, we got a hold of the technology, and we um, we designed it for the cannabis user. And it, it's been about three years now, and it's we've we've had some growing pains, but it's really been a success. And you know, it, we found a a need in the market, and you know, offered a solution. I, I think that's the success. You know, for for any good company, you say you found a need in the marketplace. Uh, where did you notice this need, and and how did you end up starting this company? Well, that's that probably that's probably a long, long story. But I, I, I'll, uh, you know, I'll start with uh, you know I'm from Michigan as well as you, and uh, our our medical law, our medical marijuana law, passed about five, six years now. And while we have probably the most liberal language as far as you know possession, use, and sale of marijuana. Our courts and uh, police officers don't always see eye to eye, and you know what we found is a lot of folks were getting in trouble, mainly for the smell, not because they had a card or if they had a card it didn't matter. You know, you know the the police officer always says I I smell marijuana. It's not often they say I see marijuana. So just kept hearing story after story of legal patients getting arrested. For you know, having a you know a, a joint or a bowl or whatever they were using on their person, and uh, you know, getting rung through the courts is is you know how that process can be. So we really couldn't fight the legal system, and you know, I I, I thought, well, if, if they can't smell it, they can't arrest you. So you know, with that, and then you know, again. The, Finding some partners in the medical community that were already using this technology, uh, we uh, we've been working for about three years selling the product now, and, it, and it's been it's been a it's been great. Um, there there are a lot of uh, uses that you could put a no smell technology to. It's interesting that you ended up picking cannabis. I mean, it's an obvious solution. I, I would I would think that um, you'd want to find a way of of containing that smell. This this product actually not only contains it so that you can't smell through that barrier, but it actually absorbs and eliminates odor. Is that correct? It does. It absorbs and it eats it. it it's um, So it's a very expensive fabric, and, and that's been one of the challenges as we've been growing the company. It's the same material if you were to open up a chemical warfare suit, for example. Um, oh, yeah. Inside the soldier's lining is the same same fabric and you know same same kind of technology applies if there's mustard gas or whatnot in the air the suit is supposed to eat the uh really? the weapon so the weapon in, in our case is the the smell of marijuana well it's a potent weapon because so like, it, you, like you say that's a high it, risk factor when it comes to police being able to detect its presence exactly and you know we don't suggest that um you know, folks take this in store permanently. So it's more like point A to point B solution, storage solution. Right. So once you're home and, you know, you know, I think some people enjoy the aroma. So Well, it's not just police. You don't, it, it's not just police that you might want to hide this from in way of odor. Um, a lot of people um, are very affected by odor, and especially something like that, if they know what it is. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, and it's not just cops. You know, there's a more you know stigma attached to marijuana. No one wants their in-laws or their children or friends to know. And you know, we find that um, women seem to be more conscious about the smell. Of it. Not not that that you know. Well, it's it's that expensive you know perfume that they're using. If you if you got some marijuana on you, you don't want it to. You, you know, there's there's a subtle feminineness of of odor, and, and it's part of the whole presence, isn't it? Boy, that's that's oh. really that's really going to wreck the whole picture, isn't it? Yes. Well, they're spending less on the perfume to make up for the cost of the bag. <laughs> Where can people get these bags, Ryan? 
Well, we we sell um, we sell through a, a wholesale network uh, in several dispensaries across a few states, um, but most of our sales are online. So you can uh, find us at nosmell dot com. All right, that's easy enough. And are they going to see exactly what they're going to get there? There's pictures of it and and testimonials, or what? What do you got there at the site? <laughs> Sure, sure. Um, you know, just like any e-commerce site, uh, you know, frequently asked questions. Uh, there's product pictures. There's some videos. I think uh, the video clip that you were trying to play <laughs> before before I rudely interrupted yes, was uh, okay. it, were... it is on there. And you know, we've been at several trade shows. I think you, we've seen you out at the Cannabis Cups a few times. Uh, and um, but but yeah, live testimonials. Uh, you know. Patients actually using the bag, so a lot of information, and um, we, we get a lot of our business through referrals. So we we've grown quite organically with with the business. You know, uh, I've noticed that this is a, the kind of thing that people tend to buy a lot when they see it in person, because when it's demonstrated, boy, you really get a presence for what the significance of the meaning of, of the of the purposefulness of this bag. It's useful, and and you really don't get that smack in the face until you've got something strong as marijuana smelling in the bag and and you give it to somebody and tell them to try and detect what's in there um it's nearly impossible you're right. you're, no you're you're right steve and a lot of education is going behind this product and you know inventory has been our main challenge to date we've built or we're still growing a, a really strong dispensary network so you know, again, it, our product is geared for the medical cannabis user, and, you know, we find that uh, when dispensaries have these bags on their counters and, you know, not cluttered with, you know, the pipes and the bongs and the papers, you know, it, it, it really, it, 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 the patients really respond, and um, we find a lot of the bud tenders and dispensary owners are, you know, um, able to show or give a product demonstration right there on site. And and, and that's, you know, our, our best marketing, as you said. You know, people want to see it, touch it, feel it. Well, and, I, um, I just noticed that when uh, when we've gone out in, in public, because we've done this at the Hash Bash, we did it at Cannabis Cup and at other locations, where we've been on, sure. pre- been on site with the radio show, um, we've actually gone and tested this with people in, in the marketplace. and And the reactions that you get from people about, that smell not being there and then opening it up and having it smack you in the face is uh, mm-hmm. is 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 really uh, sta- it really stands out. I mean, it, uh, I don't know how else to put it. It it really catches you when when that happens. There's a lot of great reactions to people using the bags because I think it, the the light bulb that goes on is is hard to describe because yeah, you, so, yeah. suddenly you're like, wow, okay, now I get it. Um, yeah. Where do they make these bags at? Are you guys doing this uh, out of the country or in the country, or how's this work? Well, again, the, the fabric itself is a patented product, and that that's imported from the UK, the, the inner material. Um, but we do um, we do manufacture all of our bags in the United States, Yay. and we're actually we're actually hoping to bring a few more jobs to Michigan. We're uh, we're taking on a little more of the production here in the state, and, and, and mainly so we can kind of innovate the product. We we get a lot of feedback from customers about size and shape, and you know the, these things. And 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 I think this year is going to be our big year for really innovating the the aesthetics of the bag. So, and, and, and in addition, a few more products in the no smell line. So there. Um... These bags, uh, when you talked about size and shape, these are important to people, aren't they? Size and shape. Sure, sure. You know, we we've, we've we've gotten everyone from the, I, I guess, the distributors or large growers in California who want custom duffel bags to, you know, the the, the guy who's got a few uh, joints in his pocket, and, and and you know, we found that the sweet spot is really. You know, half an ounce of herb, maybe a pipe, and, and and our large bags, our most popular seller, they would hold up to an ounce of uh, cannabis. Now, how long does will the bags are they the bags last indefinitely? When am I going to have to replace my Canalog bag? Sure. Uh, well, you know, certainly wear and tear is always 
you know, prevalent, you know, if you cut it or snag it on something, it, you know, I, there's really not too many fixes for that. But you, you've uh, got a breach. the bags themselves just need to be wiped down. They don't need to be cleaned. They don't need to be washed. Um, our In our carbon technology, we've had a bag for about four and a half years now that's been, that, that was with our, you know, original manufacturer. And the technology still lasts. You know, they claim that if it ever wears out, you would just run a, a blow dryer over it. But honestly, oh, wow. we, we've had we've had a bag for four and a half years that still uh, still holds up. That's uh, that's amazing. Actually, I didn't know this about this uh, that that it had that kind of longevity attached to it. And and the whole thing about the hair dryer that's a curveball I never saw coming. Um, well, if you look at um, if you look at the General Services Administration, that you know the supply side of the military chemical warfare suits you'll find stay 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 around for about 20 years and you know having served myself i i know my uh my chemical warfare suit probably was at least 25 years old when i put it on so my chemical it, warfare it, it, suit. it works you know if you take care of it and um the bag will hold up versus you know a lot of our competitors are more just plastic bags and right. you know don't have the efficiency but are, are more prone to wear and tear um, we were just got a couple, just literally maybe about a minute at, at tops left in the show or left in this segment. I, I wanted to, to ask you about uh, future stuff. Are, are you going to make other products aside from the no smell bag? Is there other stuff in the no smell line? Well, you know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be, be brief if we've got a minute here, but um, we actually had patented a, a box that has a, um, a locking technology in it. That is kind of like your smartphone. If you're in the car, it'll shut down your phone so you can't text. Oh, wow. As that same talk about technology, it'll lock the box. So we've got, you know, more locking storage solutions for the future. We also have um, like a, I, I guess, an Axe body spray, but oh, know, wow. all organic. And uh, we'll actually remove the smell versus masking the smell. So we're working through a couple challenges there, but, uh, you know, we hope to have that you know, in the product uh, portfolio within uh, it's, it's, probably in the next six months. It's interesting that you say that, uh, removing the smell rather than masking the smell. This is the same problem that um, that uh, uh, room freshener companies, pe- people that uh, make products you spray in a room to cover odor. Uh, that's the that's the trick. That's the key in the phrase is cover the odor because then you've got, you know, if you've got a poop smell, now you've got poop and flowers. Um this when you're talking about removing the odor or neutralizing the odor, boy, that's a whole different horse game, isn't it, Ryan? There's a lot of science, and you, you know, you you don't want people just spraying anything on themselves. So you know, a lot a lot of diligence has gone into this. Uh, one more time, uh, where can people go to get uh, the No Smell bags? It's, it's uh, catalog. NoSmell.com. So nobody knows. All right. Thank you, Ryan Richmond, for giving us an update on on the company and, and what you guys are doing. I, I look forward to some uh, other fascinating products coming out of that research. Uh, thank you, Ryan okay. Richmond. Thanks, Steve. Uh, we will be right back with news and information on the cannabis front next. You're getting the bull milk. I've seen things no man should bear. And those that every man should dare. From the beaches of Normandy to the far reaches of the earth. In my life, I have lived millions of lives. I've outrun robots and danced with dinosaurs. I've faced the faces of fear and fortitude and witnessed great beauty in the making. I've kept the company of kings and queens, but I'm no royalty or saint. I've traveled trekked, wandered, and roamed, only to find myself right where I belong. Jeep. See your authorized Jeep retailer for details on how you can become a Jeep owner. 
We asked people to tell us something that happened in their past and something that might happen in their future. The good things were put on yellow magnets and the bad ones on blue. The results show the past was a pretty even mix of good and bad, yet the future was almost all good things. Now that you've seen the results of this experiment, what does it mean to you? We all want to think about positive stuff. Realistically, there will be downtimes. It's great to think optimistically, but let's plan for whatever the future might bring. Prudential, bring your challenges. If you're like us, your pets aren't just animals. They're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, what are you smoking? Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. Like other hemp-based products for humans, the allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart. And the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. Visit PetPain.com or ask for Pet Pain at your local pet store. PetPain.com. CBD relief for your pet. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. Victory. Who doesn't love a good taste of victory? Well, what what equals victory today in the cannabis community? Well, it's going to be on the legal front, isn't it? Uh, Nothing in the cannabis community has any common sense to it at all. As long as it's standing in that prohibition space, right? As long as it's in that spot. There's not, I mean, it it changes the whole availability, access, information, understanding. All these things are lost when the market is black. Now that the market is coming to bear, you know, and and under much strife, uh, let's face it, cannabis has got a horrible, horrible stigma attached to it. It's got the hippie stigma, it's got the drug culture stigma, it's got the slippery slope stigma, it's got the child danger stigma. It's just, most of it is nonsense in the long run. Um, The fact of the matter is, cannabis has been around in this country for a really long time, and people have been using it regularly without problems or issues. There are always the exceptions to the rule. I mean, people have issues with water, and with food, and with sleep. Necessities in life, just basic biological function. Uh, So when you talk about substance and its effects on the body, uh, it's easy, really easy, in a sexy cell to say, you know what, This this is just dangerous. There's nothing to prove that this is dangerous. In fact, the evidence stands the other way. The, the evidence, if you look for evidence, there's a lot of rhetoric. Don't confuse rhetoric with evidence. And, and, and the people who are, are behind the prohibition and the rhetoric are also all about maintaining that market space control. Because all these people are invested in other things. These, these people on the prohibitionist side, they're invested into revenue streams that prohibition supports and, and almost... Con- uh, exclusively contributes to. So if you're making all your money off of prohibition, it's really important to your company to make sure that uh, prohibition stays, that it doesn't ever go away, and that it's not even modified. That's horrible public policy for financial purposes, only financial purposes. Because let me tell you, if cannabis was a danger... If, if government officials really thought that cannabis was dangerous, and I'm talking from the medical side and from the, you know, the adult use side, um, it's going to be this story. This, this story is going to highlight, I think, uh, that point. Legislators would not be busy saying that uh, this is a great way to solve. We're going to bend our position on public safety. As long as 
we have some money in exchange for it. See, that's selling out. It's also lifting your skirt, isn't it? Because if the whole, if, if what I'm saying is true, and it is, I mean, you can disagree with me or, you know, if you really want to disagree with me, there's a phone number you can call up and disagree with me about. We'll have that adult conversation. I mean, I, I'm perfectly willing to listen to everything that you have to say and support you in that statement. However, understand that I'm also going to show you the truth about what this is and what this is not. And I'll give you evidence to that. So these people like to control that evidence by by making the people that are in control of that prohibition space, uh, the institutions and regulatory agencies that you've got to break through as a barrier to even get access to cannabis to research, is the Drug Abuse Foundation. It's NIDA. It's the National Institute of Drug Abuse. It's a, it's a national foundation. It is government supported. It is taxpayer supported. And they're the ones, the drug abuse people, the ones who are chiefly responsible for looking at drugs of abuse and their effects are the ones with the lock and key on access to medical research. They'll tell you you can do your research on your cannabinoids. They won't stop you from doing that, but you can't use the plant and you're going to have to manufacture them synthetically. And if you know anything about cannabis, you'll know that that destroys the entire model of cannabis because cannabis is like no other plant. It's got this synergistic effect, this what's been coined, what's been called the entourage effect. It's, it's not just the one thing in particular. It's all of them together, you see. And if you, if you, if you isolate something, and it's not a natural compound, because really these compounds work together in the plant. Otherwise, they wouldn't all be there. The other cannabinoids, it's really important that the other cannabinoids are there because they support the initial cannabinoids or they counteract certain effects or, 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 or deficits in other cannabinoids. They're, they're all supportive of each other. They balance each other. They work together in harmony like a band, like a choir. It, 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 you can have a solo artist all day long, but a choir a solo artist is not. And... and you know, the prohibitionists, through medical people, uh, through the medical, you know, process of FDA approval, you know, stage one clinical trial, stage two, stage three, final approval. Um, those people always want to isolate compounds. And you can do this with other plants. In fact, you can do it with almost every other plant. You cannot do this with cannabis, so it never is going to fit that model. But you've got Connecticut here. The story is... Um, just uh, lift it up real quick. The story here is uh, is about Connecticut. Oh, geez, I'm in the wrong spot here. The story's on Connecticut saying, hey, you know, we're broke. And being that we're broke, maybe we should start looking at marijuana. See, in Michigan, it was marijuana for, for potholes. Pot, potholes for pot. Pot for potholes, I think it was. <laughs> um. And that's a sexy sell to many, to many people. But if, but if indeed you substituted something really dangerous for cannabis, say grenades, grenades are definitely dangerous. They won't let you have them. It's an explosive device that can cause great harm in immediate proximity and death. It is the usual side effect of letting a grenade go. So if, if, if marijuana was truly dangerous, just like grenades are, then you wouldn't have legislators saying, you know what, let's, let's, let's do f grenades for granite repair, right? I mean, hey, we, we'll bend our position on public safety with grenades as long as you're going to support our position to give us more money. And that's frustrating to me. It's frustrating. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get all side twisted off the main story. Let me give you the main story first, because what good is the rest without the main part of it, right? Um, this is Connecticut, and this is the story itself comes from DailyCaller.com, which may be publishing this from another source. Um, Guy Bentley is the reporter who, who reported on this. They're moving further down the road to marijuana legalization with a fresh bill and widespread support. Uh, 
a state representative there is promising to push hard for legalization for those over 21 and is introducing a bill to the General Assembly with nine Democratic legislators reporting to the Inquisitor, who probably originally reported on this on this story. I'm going to be engaging my leadership in conversation to at least allow a public hearing, he said. Legislation, legalization, could be a tempting option for lawmakers who are struggling with a large budget deficit of more than $500 million. I mean, that's a lot of money. Legalizing, this that's half a billion. It, it, that's debt. How can you move on as a state? And I don't even know if they've got a balanced budget or not. I don't know if they're spending more than they're making. But the answer to that question is definitely not. I mean, there's a, there are ways to grow your your business. There are ways to grow your your economy so that it will make up for the lost revenue that you're currently experiencing. One of those ways is is uh, like this. Where, the, where you're using a change in public policy to generate the tax resources, the tax revenues necessary to, to, to be sustainable. I don't know how long it would take them in Connecticut to repair their $500 million deficit. Or really, this is, a, this, I don't know, this is not a budget deficit. I mean, this is, a, this is just debt. I mean, that's a big hole. How, long, how much pot do you got to sell to fill that hole when you're just getting a portion of it in tax revenue and maybe some licensing revenue? It's a good question. It seems like um, Colorado did that in a couple of years. The question is, would their debt increase? You know, I don't know enough about that side of it. But what I'm saying here is this. Um, number one, it blows a hole in the entire argument in Connecticut ever uh, that said, that marijuana is somehow dangerous and needs to be restricted and made illegal. It, the, the policy idea on its head is, it's, it's, it's there, there's a word I'm looking for to describe this, and I can think of many, but none of them hit the head on the nail. Um, it's preposterous is what it is. So, in the long run, this business with Connecticut selling to its own legislators the idea that here is a creative solution to our budget deficit problems. And I am not arguing with that creative solution. I'm not. I don't necessarily agree that you should be taxing cannabis, uh, although that's, that's just part of what happens when you're talking public policy uh, for any product, unless it's food. Many places do not tax food. You certainly aren't taxed for it when I go to the store. There's no federal or state tax on food uh, with some small exceptions. Prepared food and uh, what is it? Um, uh, what's the other stupid exception? Oh, uh, you know, some like soda pops. Or, uh, there's some, there are some exceptions to taxation. It's a snack tax. See, I don't agree with taxes that are levied specifically, like sin taxes. The sin taxes don't work. What they do is they they abuse the abused even more. I mean, if, if you've got a cigarette problem, like I do, and you're already spending a lot of money on, on you know, your addiction, because I have a nicotine addiction, uh, there are, there's a bigger problem at play there, isn't there? You're getting the full melt. Promotional consideration provided by nosmell.com pioneering the storage market for cannabis users the no smell patented bag technology offers users 100 percent smell proof detection from even the most sophisticated of noses nosmell.com so nobody knows when placing your order for a no smell bag make sure to use discount code full melt and take 10 percent off the entire order learn more about no smell technology at nosmell.com young students are our future they're eager to learn eager to succeed, eager to make the world a better place. And they want to make it to school safely. Share the road, take care when passing, and always leave three feet between you and people on bikes. Bikes are legal road vehicles. We're all drivers. When you need legal help, you don't want to guess at who's standing next to you in court. And when it comes to a medical marijuana defense, 
It's even smarter to partner with a lawyer before you need one. Based in Royal Oak, David Rudoy has a proven history of not being afraid to take your case all the way to the Supreme Court and win. Find the law offices of Rudoy Law at RudoyLaw.com. RudoyLaw.com is a quick reference on your rights concerning Michigan medical marijuana and up-to-date news. That's R-U-D-O-I Law.com. Call 248-935-9074 now and talk about your legal needs because at RudoyLaw.com, we don't just stand up for you. We stand up with you. If you're like us, your pets aren't just animals. They're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, what are you smoking? (laughs) Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. Like other hemp-based products for humans, The allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart. And the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. Visit PetPain.com or ask for Pet Pain at your local pet store. PetPain.com. CBD relief for your pet. Hey, it's Steve Green for the Sweet Leaf in Flint, because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan, is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person, 400 South Door Highway, or call 810-259-2571. The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810-259-2571. 571. Man, I did it again. It's, it's, oh, I can't take it. How does this happen? Here we go. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. That's the state of my, state of my, state of my head. That's the state of my, state of my, state of my head. It's been a long, bumpy ride sitting back. Yo, uh, you can find us on thefullmelt.com. If you want to subscribe to our iTunes link, it's right there at the top of the page. Click and subscribe. Really simple to do. Get every show, every episode dropped right in your iTunes folder. Uh, And we have five of them a week to go with. Facebook and Twitter links also there. Please follow and like. Um, So the part that I was talking about the last segment with Connecticut and, and, and cannabis... Uh, The fiscal situation the state finds itself in is fertile ground for discussing the legalization of marijuana. And that says it all right there. Really. I mean, and and look, I'm grateful that it took the state breaking itself over the answer to every possible question on the face of the planet is a tax cut. Because you realize that the government, the state, the state and federal governments, your city, your township governments, uh, your parish, wherever you're at, wh- whatever unit of government you have, wherever you're at. Um, these are businesses. They're 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 different from normal businesses because they're public businesses with, funded by public money. But they wouldn't have treasurers if these indeed weren't businesses. They clearly are. They're set up and established just that way. And they operate that way. They operate just like a board of directors at a business. Deciding what they're going to spend their money on, what their future targets are, what their revenue streams are looking like. And all I'm saying is that there's no other company in the face of the planet, including here in the great old USA, that uh, that is, that is, um, oh boy. Excuse me a moment. None of these companies are going to be telling you uh, that they'd like to cut their income, that they'd like to shrink their revenue stream. Not even based on the idea that somehow shrinking their revenue stream will grow their company and make up for the lost revenue. No businesses are pitching this idea. You will find this language, this speech, nowhere in a corporate boardroom across this great land of ours, except in the legislatures, in the halls of Congress, and your state government. 
It even happens in your local township, your municipal government. This this business of talking, getting taxes smaller. There's a na- there's a place for that. And, and once you use a tool like that, its effectiveness goes down the next time you reach out to try and use that tool again for an equivalent, uh, equivalent outcome. When you shrink your revenues, you have a harder time paying the bills. I don't know anybody here that wants to stick their hand up and say, I will volunteer for a pay cut unless it means it's the only way they can keep their job. Hey, you guys, uh, company meeting. The ants, we're going to let you guys decide your own fates because we've, we, the bean counters have come in and said we've got to make a change because we're not doing well enough as a company under current circumstances. So we've got two choices. You can all take a cut in pay by X percent. Maybe it's 20 percent cut across the board. You're going to have to contribute more towards your, your, your medical plan if you've got one with us. Um, but you're going to make less in the long run and you're going to have to pay more. We can do that, or uh, we'll give you all pink slips at the end of the day, and you guys could go find another way of making a living. Tell that to your creditors and your family. Uh, it, it incenses me when uh, politicians, it doesn't matter the branch, the, the breed, the creed of a politician, because it's all a farce anyways. The people in control of this country anyways are all the same creed, uh, the same breed, it's the dollar bill breed. People no longer elect and do business in government here. Money does. Big business does. Oligarchy is what they call it. It's a, uh, there's another word for it, too. When, when you when you, you got the marriage of business and government. Well, we'll get into economics later. But it, it's very frustrating to see state governments cut their own taxes so that they can, you know, allow people to have a tinier piece of. I mean, most of these people who's had these tax cuts uh, are hardly even noticeable in the long run. M- much of these taxes that they do that they cut and they and they, you know, get reelected back into office are ba- based on some notion, some idea that they achieved a goal, that they did something useful for the people by cutting taxes. Um, when the effect of the tax cut was small, when, when people feel it, but. Um, the, the hole created by the tax cut is always huge. Uh, you can ta- cut taxes some significantly across the board, do some tax cuts, some targeted tax cuts, and, and you'll get some relief, and, and, and business and people will be able to do a little bit better. But um, w- when, when the state no longer has the ability to meet its own requirements, to pay its own bills, because it's shrunk the size of its revenue stream so significantly that those programs – and, and policies and laws were impacted, maybe to the point of their non-existence, um, then you got, uh, you got bigger problems. And, and the people that always pay for that, because a lot of those programs aren't for the well-to-do. A lot of those programs are for the poor, the disabled, the disadvantaged, the elderly, the children, the most vulnerable in our society, the ones that government is responsible first to go protect. Because the other ones have their own protection available to them. They can deploy it when it's needed. The poor and the sick and the elderly, there's disadvantaged people in this country, which are comprising a larger and larger segment of the population, have no opportunity to do the same. And this is why the social nets are here. This is why we created all these social nets. The problem is, is that they're expensive and, and often mismanaged. And this is why people want to cut taxes, because they don't like these programs at all. There's a lot of things I don't like in life. I don't like to wipe my butt, but it's got to happen. Seriously, there's a lot of crap that we do in life every single day that we don't like to do, but it's part of living. And, uh, you know, you can't nerf the world. And, you know, as, as much as people would like to tell you it's possible, especially in the millennial generation where, you know, everybody's grew up getting a trophy for attending. Oh, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. We don't want to diminish their, their self-esteem over a loss. What do you think is going to happen the first time this kid goes out there in the world and loses a job? Because, hey, I can't just get a check for thinking good about stuff. I actually have to do some work. Uh, off on stuff. <sighs> a couple quick things, a couple quick mentions here before we get off. We're running out of time here on the program. Um, 
So big pharma first. Uh, this, uh, we were talking earlier a little bit about big pharma. I was telling you about how big pharma doesn't fit the mold of FDA approved products. I mean, the Federal Trade Commission will come down on you like a ton of bricks making a claim to cure. It doesn't matter if it's not your medicine, if it's just a natural remedy. If you're if you're getting paid to distribute materials that tell people they can cure themselves for anything and you don't have any medical criteria, any studies to back your claim, they will shut you down and take all your money. I mean, terribly. And uh, it seems that some there's some news about that today um, with Pfizer. And I'm just going to point you to Newsweek if you want to check it out. Look, uh, check uh, Google Newsweek and Pfizer, P-F-I-Z-E-R, and you'll see the story there about why, because it's a bigger answer than I have got time to explain here today, uh, why, why Big Pharma has, hasn't developed mass marijuana as, as, a way to, um, as a way to cure things. And then really quickly, the other story I wanted to point you to is the antithetical to the old prohibition message that this is your brain. And this is your brain on drugs. Really? Well, there's evidence today that says marijuana may boost brain performance. Go to worldhealth.net and see the story there about how marijuana may be boosting that brain performance. We'll see you tomorrow on The Full Melt Show. The Full Melt Show is a production of TFM Media.